Uh, we also provided citizens an opportunity to send any questions they may have on Twitter concerning the topic of the conference. And the first question is for Madame Superdi. Uh, how do you measure exactly the effectiveness of the roadmap you mentioned in your speech? Madame Superdi, the floor is yours. As I um, mentioned, eh, these roadmaps are meant to uh, identify first uh, the needs, uh, then uh, 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 bottlenecks, then uh, tools eh, to address the uh, bottlenecks, and then a concrete action plan. So we are working on it, and eh? we are not done. Uh, yet, because by definition, this process, as I, I, I mentioned before, is meant to be a co-creation process, meaning that uh, we do not think uh, to be the, the best place in the European Commission to, to, uh, you know, to dictate uh, uh, solutions uh, uh, to business. Uh, we, uh, of course, uh, we have policy uh, objectives, uh, uh, notably uh, those uh, uh, in the field of uh, uh, digitalization and sustainability. But then we need to, to have a discussion uh, together with, uh, with industry to see how these policy objectives can be uh, translated in practice. So um, this is, uh, you know, it's a, it's a work, uh, it's work in progress. So it's not a work which is already set. And so it's, a, it's, a, it's an ambition, it's a roadmap. And I think that, uh, that uh, when uh, a concrete action plan we want to uh, identify uh, targets, uh, but, we, uh, but which we have to be commonly agreed with the, with the, with the industry, targets and milestones, and uh, uh, key performance indicators. So we have to work on minimum indicators that we uh, assess uh, together with industry uh, progress uh, towards uh, commonly identified uh, targets. Thank you so much. <clears throat> the second question goes to Ms. Fittori. Many of our audience members are curious about the difference between the 4G and the 5G. Could you help them explain the main difference? What are some areas of application for the 5G system that would not work as well under 4G? Yes, sure. Thank you very much for really quite important question. Um, I think that 5G will will improve the performance of, of mobile connectivity in kind of three key areas. Um, one is speed. Um, we will see kind of speeds increase by almost tenfold. The average speed of a 4G network is, is between 20 up to 30, 35 megabit per second. With 5G, this will increase to an average of 100 and, and 200 uh, uh, megabit per second. So it, it's going to be really kind of very fast speeds. Um, secondly, low latency. Um, low latency is, is really, what does it mean? Is the time um, it takes for a, a device uh, connected to an online service to respond to, to your inputs or, or in instructions. So it's really the time lag of, of, um, of, of applications, basically. And this is really crucial for um, services like virtual reality, augmented um, reality, which need kind of extremely fast um, uh, reactions. But also, um, if you look at connected driving, for example, for some of the, um, especially the security aspects, low latency is super important. And um, the, the third um, technical aspect is, is huge capacity compared to 4G, which also will mean that, um, that data traffic can be handled when lots of people 
are trying to simultaneously access the, um, the services. So for example, um, in the context of the ongoing um, Euro 2020 tournament, um, a good example would be when lots of people are actually trying to use at the same time their device um, in a very crowded um, uh, stadium. Um, what are the key applications? Well, I think I can give you some examples of applications that we know already about, uh, but I think it's important to bear in mind that a lot of the new um, um, applications will be developed, you know, once the, once the technology is widely available. And as I said before, today we only have 14% coverage of 5G. Um, in Europe, so the technology is not yet widely available. But some of the things um, is, for example, kind of you know, um, uh, from enter from an entertainment uh, perspective, um, for example, download of a full HD film will be in around three minutes. Um, so it, it's going to be much faster for for streaming, etc. Um, then also. Uh, for virtual reality, augmented reality applications. Um, and um, I think very importantly, a lot of professional or business uses. So I think it's going to be a, a massively transformational for consumers, for, for uh, uh, citizens, but, uh, but I think we expect an even more transformational impact on businesses. So for example, which, which does impact, of course, citizens as well. So for example, um, in the area of e-health or telemedicine, it will be possible to carry out um, remote, remote surgeries in real time using robotic arms, um, uh, precision farming, um, internet of things. Um, we can we can help with 5G drones to cooperate in emergency situations, um, driveless cars, um, different kinds of of, of um, smart city um, applications. So I think these are some of the um, the uses which are not yet available today and we know about. But I emphasize that. Um, that as the technology becomes available, we expect that there will be um, lots of innovations um, emerging. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Turi. And last but not least, uh, Vice President Thiel, which are some of the areas of digital development in Hungary that make us competitive or attractive in the eyes of, a, of German companies and investors. How do you see this? The Hungarian, as, as I was part of a Hungarian company, which was part of a German group. And what I experienced uh, that uh, we could um, go forward with uh, changing of processes and implemented the digital uh, developments quicker than the German companies, because I observe that Hungarian stuff is used to, is trained to change. They are much more pragmatic. So they are much more flexible. I think the, the advantage in the competitiveness is in the staff uh, and in the people, well-educated people who are pragmatic and sometimes much more pragmatic than German people are. And um, I think we, we a lot of times were ahead with our developments within the group. So I think uh, that, is an, that, that is an advantage. And beside that, of course, you see, you have heard the state secretary, how many programs are developing, developing the, um, uh, the, the digital transformations. And you have also an advantage, you have, uh, uh, ministry for innovation and technology yeah what we do not have in german these are split um, the, the responsibilities are split among many ministries yeah so definitely that is also an advantage thank you so much uh, ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for your uh, participation and for our speakers for their valuable presentations I believe that we all learned something new today. It's time for lunch now and some refreshments before we continue with our third roundtable discussion titled Digitalization and European Citizens, how to ensure 
ethical digital transition. So it's really timely and exciting. Thank you for joining us and stay tuned.